Hello everyone, welcome to another Media Composer tutorial. Today we want to take a look at how to work with lookup tables, also known as LUTs, inside Avid Media Composer. All right, there are different ways how to apply LUTs. We're gonna start by applying them to two clips. These two clips are just linked. I'm gonna show you in a second why. All right, you select all the clips that you want to apply your LUT to, right click, and you go to your source settings. And here under color encoding, you can go to color adapter, open this drop down menu here, and you can see a list of LUTs that are pre installed. I know that this footage is Sony S Log 2, and I want to turn this into Rec 709. So that's the LUT I'm going to apply here. I select my LUT and click add. You can shuttle through your clip and see if you like it. You can also technically apply several LUTs, so you can choose something else and just add more as much as you want or need, or also delete them again. Apparently this only works one at a time, unfortunately. And then you can decide if you want to apply this only to one individual clip. In this case, I have selected several. So I'm going to click apply to all. In that case, if you've selected all your dailies or a whole camera card, you can apply the LUT to a bunch of clips at once. Okay, after clicking apply, you can click OK. And you can see the slot is also on my second clip here. So again, in this case, these clips are linked only and I'm going to show you why now. Once you transcode your clips, you can now decide if you want to bake the LUT into the clip or not. I'm going to show you both cases. Let's burn the LUT into this first clip and transcode it. All right, this is the transcoded lowest clip. And if you go into the source settings of this transcoded clip, you can see that there are no color adapters applied because it's baked into this shot. However, if you go into the source settings of the link clip, you can see the color adapter is still there. Let's transcode this clip again. And this time we don't burn the LUT into the clip. All right, and let's go into the source settings again. And you can see here, you can still manipulate the LUT. You can delete it. You can add a different LUT to the clip or several ones. Oof, that looks terrible. <laughs> but again, I just want to demonstrate in the first instance, we can't change the LUT anymore after transcoding. In my second example, at any time, you can delete these LUTs, thank God. So that's something you have to decide for yourself if you want to burn the LUT into a clip or if you want to stay flexible and be able to adjust the LUT later on. I think if you burn the LUT into the file, there is a slight chance that maybe your playback is less affected by the LUT or several LUTs because Media Composer doesn't have to work as much in the background to apply these LUTs in real time. Most of the time I'm actually just applying the LUT without burning it in just to stay flexible, just in case, and I've never had any playback issues. Of course, you can also first transcode your clips and then later on, after transcoding, applying your LUT to the clip. Once you start editing with your clips, let's just throw these two into our timeline. It is very easy to tell if the LUT is burned in or not. This clip here has a LUT applied to it in the source settings. It's easy to tell because you can see this little symbol here, the little C. And if you go into your effects editor, you can see there is a color adapter applied. If there were several, you could see all of them. You can't actually do anything with them, but it's a really quick way of checking what LUT has been applied to your clip. This clip here has no symbols, so that is an easy way of telling. This is now the color of the clip. You can't remove this anymore. The LUT is burned into this clip. Okay, there's one thing else to pay attention to. Let's say you start editing with the clip and there's no LUT applied to it. Let's remove this again. Throw this into a new sequence. And then later on, after editing with it, you decide, oh, actually, I do want to apply a LUT to my clip. And you go ahead and do that. If you now go into your sequence 
you can see the footage is still as log. There is no LUT applied, but if you match frame your clip in your sequence, you can see the LUT, but it's not in your sequence. That is because once you apply a LUT to a clip that has been already used in the sequence, you have to update your sequence. And that's very easy. You just select your sequence, right click, refresh sequence. And you can see that's actually the case for a bunch of other things as well. And in this case, it is a color adapter that has to be refreshed in our sequence. So we select that. And now all clips in your sequence should be colorful as well. And you can see now our clip has this little C symbol in our sequence. Sometimes when you link your clips and Avid recognizes what camera type your clips are from, Media Composer will automatically apply a LUT to your clip. So either way, once you link your clips, it always makes sense to just check the source settings really quick to then decide, do you want the LUT on there or not? And do you want to burn it into your clips while transcoding or not? Okay, and there is another way of applying LUTs to your clips in case you don't want to apply a LUT to your source clips. Let's remove the LUT again for this example and create another sequence. If you go to your effects editor and you go down to image, you can see that there is an effect called LUT and you can either apply that directly to a clip in your sequence, open your effects editor and apply a LUT here in your effects editor and be able to just turn it on and off in your sequence. Or let's say you have a bunch of clips in your sequence. You can apply the LUT to a whole track, for example. And again, just open your effects editor, choose your LUT. And so in this case, this is now applied to your whole sequence. I've seen that before. I've also seen people deselecting their sync lock on one dedicated LUT track. So they can just keep editing and the LUT just stays on top of everything and they are able to manipulate it quick and easy at any point. That works of course as well. But what happens if you can't find the LUT that you need? That is no problem either. You can either, when you apply your LUT to your clip in your source monitor, go to color management settings and select a external lookup table. Just navigate to the LUT that you need, select it and open it. Evan now tells you that this LUT was installed successfully. If you work with multiple editors on the show, it makes sense. Actually, I think it makes all, always sense to share it. In that case, other editors can use it as well. And if you back up the Avid project, the LUT is also going to be backed up. And there's one other way to get to these settings. You can also go to your settings, which you can find under File, Settings, in the more recent Media Composer versions, and go to User. And here you go to Color Management you can see the same window over here. I hope this video was helpful. Feel free to subscribe if you don't want to miss any of my other videos. There's also a link in the video description if you want to donate something. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time.